Hey, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a speculative video where I talk about my wish list for the Panasonic GH6. Should Panasonic ever decide to release another Micro Four Thirds camera? <sighs> we'll see. When the GH5 released in 2017 and then the GH5S released in 2018, those cameras had a significant competitive advantage in terms of specs and features. Um, that really competed with much higher-end professional video cameras than did other mirrorless cameras. However, like I mentioned in my previous video, some full-frame cameras have, in, in essence, caught up to what the GH5 offers in terms of professional features. So now, Panasonic is going to have to figure out some, some way to, you know, get ahead again. One way that Micro Four Thirds cameras compete is on price. Now, I'm not gonna speculate on what the price is going to be, but history as a guide would say that, you know, the ballpark would be around $2,000. I have seen some rumors that indicate or speculate that Panasonic is going to go like the three camera tri triumvirate, <laughs> tripartite system. They're gonna announce three separate GH cameras, GH6s, some sort of, sort of, similarly, the same as they did with the S, S1. They got the S1, the S1R, and the S1H. If Panasonic does that, I would imagine that the video camera, video-centric camera, would be the most expensive one. And the GH5S launched in 2018 at $2,500, so, I would hope that that would be the top of the price ta price bracket. Or they could go the other route and just try to be as cheap as possible. Because I think Blackmagic Design was pretty successful in undercutting the competition with the Pocket Cinema the Camera 4K at $1,200. But I think they made a lot of compromises to build quality, reliability, durability with that camera that I don't anticipate Panasonic you know, copying that strategy. I would imagine that they were going to keep you know, very rugged, durable, uh, weather sealed kind of um, form factor that they've been doing with whatever the GH6 ends up being. So I don't see them really trying to undercut the competition too much. But also keep in mind that there's the Fujifilm X-T4 floating around out there that does a pretty good job of competing in specs with the GH5, GH5S at around $1,700. People are saying that there is a 40 megapixel 8K capable sensor developed by Sony that's going to be in the next Micro Four Thirds cameras or the GH cameras. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the sensor utilized, but that's a possibility. Talking about resolution, my personal wish list doesn't really have anything to do with 8K or maybe even 6K. It wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility for Panasonic to go 8K. Now, whether or not they allow you to capture or record in 8K, or if they just downsample it into say 6K or even 4K. I'm perfectly happy with the GH5S at 10 megapixels and 4K. There's never, I've never heard anyone complain about the GH5 not being sharp enough or detailed enough. I have heard people complain that it's too sharp and maybe too video looking. So, you know, we don't necessarily need more sharpness, more resolution. So in the GH6, I would expect now that Sony a7S III can record 10-bit 422 in all of its resolutions and all of its frame rates that the GH6 will be able to do the same. Another thing that's pretty much standard now or becoming standard is the ability to, sh to record 12-bit over HDMI, whether that's you know some flavor of RAW or even if it's just standard ProRes or DNX, I would be fine with that. It is pretty much standard now, so I would expect it to be there. But more important for me would, would be 10-bit 422 in every record mode in the camera. HFR, like it does now, from two frames all the way up to 240 frames. It'd be nice if 240 frames didn't crop. The preamp in this camera can only be turned down to negative 12 dB, and it's a pretty hot signal. It can be hard to not overmodulate or get too much gain in the recording, so being able to go below 12 dB would be nice. Internal NDs. This would be, I think this would be like the game changer. This would be the thing that would separate the GH6 from the current hybrid mirrorless competition and make people take a look at it who might be turning their noses at Micro Four Thirds. What would be even better is if they went Sony's route and did like the electronically variable ND. It has, you can go steps by steps like typical 
neutral densities, they just kind of slide in like two stops, four stops, six stops. But this one, you just turn the ND on and then you can just infinite, well not infinitely because there's still a range, but anyway, between this range, you can dial in the exact amount of neutral density and it doesn't go in steps, it just goes in smooth, almost like you're turning the, like you're turning the aperture. It's pretty awesome. So if they did that, game changer, total game changer and something that a lot of people would be like, yeah, I need that, I need that in my life. And you do, you do need that. Next up on my wish list is improved dynamic range. Now, I think we're limited with Micro Four Thirds sensors. I think there's kind of an upper limit, but let's not let physics and reality get in the way of our wishes and dreams. However they do it, if they would, are able to improve the dynamic range, we'll take it. Canon in the C300 Mark III has a dual gain output sensor. So it's almost like it's capturing two different exposures and merging them, but it's not. It's kind of confusing, or I don't really understand the technology completely, or really at all, I guess. I'm kind of dumb. But, so they have like a circuit that is prioritizing capturing information in the highlights by maximizing saturation, and then they have a circuit that's prioritizing capturing clean and detailed shadow information, and then they kind of merge those two circuits into one output. I've heard that this is similar to what Aerie does for its Alexa cinema cameras, which is why they have such crazy high dynamic range. Canon says that the C300 Mark III is capable of capturing 16 plus stops of dynamic range, which would be, you know, the highest of high available right now. The thing is, I don't think that it's possible for Panasonic to do something like that, number one, because of the price. Number two, Panasonic doesn't develop its own sensors like Canon and Aerie do. Um, they buy Sony sensors and I don't know that it's possible to go ahead and like retrofit a sensor that already exists with something like that. But anyway, however they do it, improved dynamic range would be high up on my list of wants and needs. And I referenced the potential of a 40 megapixel sensor being in these cameras. Now that gives me um, a little bit of concern because higher megapixel cameras tend to have worse high ISO performance, perform worse in low light. A small Micro Four Thirds sensor with 40 megapixels I think would perform even worse comparatively speaking to, you know, a full frame high megapixel sensor in low light high ISO category. So I would prioritize having a cleaner signal, better low light performance, better high ISO performance over 40 megapixels. Like for instance, the GH5S is only a 10.2 megapixel sensor and it's plenty sharp enough for me. And the low light performance is pretty damn good for a Micro Four Thirds camera. If they could keep the dual gain ISO of the GH5S in the new camera, let's do it. Let's have a clean low ISO and a clean high ISO circuit and that way we can maximize our cleanliness. Going along with the dynamic range, Let's go ahead and put the full V-Log in there instead of the V-Log L. I do think that Panasonic, if these cameras were capable of capturing the full dynamic range that's capable in V-Log, they would have done it. They probably said, you know, it can't capture all of that, so let's go ahead and make a V-Log L. But anyway, we're dreaming here. Let's make a sensor that can capture more dynamic range and then go ahead and throw in the V-Log. Did you know you can load LUTs in here? Custom LUTs to monitor right on the camera. And it's a little bit of a process because it has to be in a very specific format. Um, if you've ever worked with LUTs, um, a common format is a dot .cube, um, but these are not dot .cube. It's something proprietary to Panasonic, I believe. And there is like a, a way to convert them, but it's like, if you don't know that, um, take some searching in the Googles to figure that out. But anyway, other things, I think you can just upload dot cubes and, and it works fine. So I think it's simplify that process. Keep the multi-aspect ratio sensor of the GH5S. So if you didn't know, GH5S has a slightly wider sensor than other Micro Four Thirds cameras do. You can see it in here. You can tell it's wider just by looking at this with no frame of reference. But what it allows for is capturing in both 17 by nine and 16 by nine without cropping the sensor. So it's able to capture the full width and the full height, depending on which aspect ratio it's in. Whereas with like the GH5 vanilla version, when you go to 16 by nine, it's basically cropping slightly a little 16 by nine box out of the, out of the full sensor. Whereas this camera doesn't crop it at all. 
and you get a slightly wider field of view. So instead of the usual two times micro four thirds crop, you get something more like a 1.8 to 1.9 times crop. Not much, but it's like a 10% difference. So that's nice. Let's keep that. Let's do that again. This is definitely something that's way out from left field. And I don't think it's probably possible given the form factor constraints, but what would be cool is if we had a side loading battery door. And I mean, only because you don't have to take the camera off of the tripod or off of your gimbal to swap batteries. It's a small thing, but we're doing a wish list here. And last but not least, and it pretty much goes without saying, which is why I haven't mentioned it up until now, is improved autofocus. Of course, I'm sure Panasonic is working on that, and they're probably going to stick with their contrast-based autofocus and used AI algorithms to really fine-tune it and improve it and make it more intuitive and make it smarter, whatever. But we need better autofocus Panasonic. We don't. We need it to latch on to our faces and then stop looking at the background, stop shifting and hunting. Just stay, just stick with something. Just pick something, even if you pick the wrong thing, just stick with it, you know, stick to your guns. That's important. And I think that's it, man. It's really not much. I really think, you know, they gotta stay in the ballpark with price. If they come, to, come in lower, that'd be amazing. They really need to go internal NDs because how else are you gonna differentiate the camera from the competition? I know 8K that's usable would be another way to kind of leapfrog the competition, but once again, not many people are clamoring for 8K because you're looking at internal media that has to be fast enough to capture all that data and it has to be big enough to capture a decent amount of data before you have to swap cards. And then you have to offload that media onto your computer, hard drives, which are going to be filling up quickly with all of that data. So anyway, it, but it is nice because, of course, most of the time you're not going to be outputting an 8K, but the ability to crop in four times and still get 4K out of that, that's pretty cool. Or crop in eight times and get 1080 out of that. Holy shit, that's amazing. So it is useful. So people who are like poo-pooing on this whole 8K thing, it could be amazing, but we don't want it overheating. We don't want record limits. You know, we got to deal with the file sizes and the data rates and the hard drive space and all that shit. So 8K, I'll take it, but I'm not clamoring for it. I would say the 8K sensor, okay, fine. Let's downsample it to 6K, downsample it to 4K, so we get smaller file sizes in the camera and still get a significant chunk of significantly better detail and resolution, even in those smaller resolutions. I mean, 6K, come on. So anyway, that's it. I think that's it's really not much. 42 10-bit in every resolution, every frame rate in camera. 12-bit, tw why can't I not say 12-bit? 12-bit out, fuck, 12-bit output. Okay, I think it's, I think it's, um, I think that's the standard now. We're gonna get that. Lower the gain of the preamp so we can go below negative 12 dB to help us modulate their hot audio signal. Dynamic range, man. We need better dynamic range. We need more dynamic range. We need smoother highlight roll-offs. Dual gain ISO, like the GH5S. Dual gain output, like the C300 Mark III. That'd be pretty awesome. If they could do that, and once again, we're looking for ways to leapfrog the competition, looking for ways to make Micro Four Thirds the king again, put it back on top where it belongs. None of this full frame shit. None of this stuff you can't even you can't even keep in focus. That's why people need autofocus so bad because there's no way they can fucking manually focus their full frame cameras at f 1.4 Tony Nothrop. I love Tony. Internal NDs, man. So did I miss anything? What would encourage you to take a look at Micro Four Thirds in this full frame world that we live in? What would make it worthwhile upgrading from your GH5, your GH5S, your BIMC 4K, your Z Cam, whatever the case is, what would it be? What would it take to make you look at the GH6? Comment in the comment section, somewhere in my crotch, usually. Fucking weird. Uh, subscribe if you want to like this video and dislike it. Please dislike it if you're that kind of person and it makes you feel better. I just want you to feel good about yourself. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. See you in another one.